This is Hempfield. Hempfield is a school. Hempfield is Landisville. Hempfield is farming. And Hempfield is farm day. Hempfield is nature. Hempfield is mountain. Hempfield is freedom. Hempfield is East Peak. Hempfield is community. Hempfield is full steam ahead. Hempfield is Centerville. Hempfield is fast paced. Hempfield is Roarstown. Hempfield is ever growing. Hempfield is just a piece of Lancaster. But this is Hempfield, and Hempfield. Hi, I'm Devin Unimaker, and welcome to this month's episode of Hemfield Happenings. This is the first show of the new season, and we are excited to show you what Hemfield has to offer. The first story this month is about students who are very important to the athletics program here at Hemfield. Tusha Pham explored the daily routine of student managers. Hempfield is home to many athletes and winning sports teams, but what most people don't know about are the students that help behind the scenes to make it all happen. Fall sports such as soccer and football require a team on and off the field. Off the field, these students are known as managers. Student managers dedicate countless hours to this activity. As far as I go, I'm here Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Fridays are games. Um, Thursday practices end early, but usually it's 3.30 to 6 p.m. every day for practices. For games especially, we do water and helmets and a lot of that stuff, but on Thursday night practices, we hand out game pants and game jerseys, stuff like that. And uh, we do a lot of paperwork for the coaches. Coach Sieber and Coach Ashley explain how student managers positively impact team morale. They are working hard at, at this job. They're not just standing around watching all the time. The job that they do it goes a long way. They do a lot of extra things. They get you know, our, equipments are our equipment room is organized, they get our, sheer, our clothing together for the players and, and they're always there when we need paperwork done. They're making sure that the guys are getting what they need as far as uh, their equipment and uh, they, they make sure that the water's out on the field. Uh, they're not running water to the guys during practice or anything, but they're making sure the stuff is out there that the guys need. They impact by being an encouragement and a supportive uh, person. Uh, they help us with keeping statistics, which is really valuable for us as we game plan and uh, analyze our games and uh, they're also a help to the team in terms of they can able fill in some of the gaps or pick up in some of the areas where players maybe have things that they need to do but would rather be better off focusing on, on the playing part of it. You're sprinting out to the blue line and jogging back. Sprinting out and jogging back. Jogging. Student managers have different motives for taking on the time committing role. It's one of the best things I ever decided to do and it's like such an experience, like a great experience I'm never going to forget and it's making my high school time like so much more memorable. It's, 
fun to actually have a part in the game even though I can't actually be playing and have a part in the success of the team. Although it takes a lot of hard work and dedication, being a manager has its benefits. I think it's fun to like see all the different personalities that's like in the football team and how they interact on the sidelines and everything that happens down there. I think if anybody else wants to do it, like they should just do it for their school or anything because it's very fun. Their work may go unnoticed, but student managers are essential to the athletic department in our school district. For Hempfield Happenings, I'm Tusha Pham. Hempfield on three! One, two, three, Hempfield! From students taking on the responsibilities of the athletic programs to a principal taking on new responsibilities at a new school, Emily McAlkine delved into the transition between being an assistant principal at Centerville Middle School to head principal at Lannisville Intermediate Center. Recently, Lannisville Intermediate Center has experienced some changes. Uh, there used to be star tickets, like you only get them at lunch and stuff, and now they have these little like uh, yellow tickets that they give to people who do things right. Well, team tickets, if you're doing good, like doing something, they give you it and you can cash them in for stuff or there's like a lottery. Every month they pick one out, but this month is take out from anywhere with Mr. Decker. Team tickets aren't the only new thing at the LIC. Mr. Decker is looking forward to starting his first year as its head principal. So to start the year, um, I know that as a team, uh, a group of teachers and our guidance counselor and school psychologists implemented a school-wide positive behavior support plan in which they implemented our team tickets. Um, me, me being my first year here, um, I really thought that was a great idea. I put all my back into it, into it as well. But right now I'm trying to get to know the teachers, get to know the students, get to know the in and outs of uh, our fourth, fifth, and sixth grade building and I'm, I've been excited about what I'm seeing. Mr. Decker enjoys working with his age group and seeing them grow. I was doing a walkthrough the other day and I just hopped in with a couple, a small group that was working on something and it was that energy and that excitement from that group of kids and when they got it, seeing that light bulb, it might sound selfish, but sometimes I feel like I get more out of that experience. Because Mr. Decker is now LIC's head principal, Mr. Bill Ackerman took over his position as assistant principal at the Centerville Middle School. I know uh, that they're in great hands with Bill Ackerman, who's now the current assistant principal at Central Middle School, we had a chance to talk uh, a few times about his new role and picking up kind of where uh, we as a team left off and I've he heard nothing but great things about how well he's doing over there as well. I'm just excited to, to, to be here at Hempfield. Um, I've always had great respect for the, the district. I'm excited to actually uh, to get a little deeper into the, the Hempfield family now. Hempfield has certainly gone through some staff changes this year. From Hempfield Happenings, I'm Emily McAlpine. There's a new student resource officer at Hempfield High School who is replacing recently promoted Sergeant Henry. Julia Campbell inquired into how this change has affected the high school. Every day, members of the East Hempfield Township Police Force protect students inside Hempfield schools. At Hempfield High School, police officers provide support to students from right inside their very own school building. The officer stationed inside Hempfield is called a School Resource Officer, or SRO. An SRO's main purpose is to provide a police presence that promotes positive relationships between students and law enforcement. Hempfield High School's principal elaborates. Our SRO is another educator to come in uh, with a little different perspective on life. All that preventative maintenance is so important uh, here at the high school. It's not an easy job. You're dealing with a lot of issues at once. After being at the high school for 10 years, Hemfield's SRO, previously referred to as Officer Henry, was promoted to the position of sergeant and had to leave his position as school resource officer. We're so excited for Officer Henry, but sad at the same time. There's little bits that every student's going to miss about Officer Henry. I've had some students that I, I've seen them already out in the community. They've been happy to see me out there. Just uh, yesterday, I stopped somebody who was from the school, and you know, and, and they were like, "Officer Henry, oh, thank goodness it's you," you know, and that made me feel really good because even though I was stopping them for a you know, bad situation, they felt comfortable. He's able to now uh, help other officers understand maybe 
the teenage uh, mindsets in the school building. I think he's going to give them a perspective and, and some help uh, so that they can deal with issues. Selecting a replacement SRO involves coordination between the East Hempfield Township Police and Hempfield School District officials. We're working alongside East Hempfield Police. They go ahead and they advertise the position. The police officers actually have to put in for the job and then we sit down with those candidates along with uh, the chief of police and other police officers and we interview those candidates. Really what you're looking for is somebody that's compassionate, cares about students, wants to give back to our community, um, cares about Hempfield in general. Hempfield hired a new SRO, Officer Tim Marks, around the beginning of the school year. Uh, Officer Marks had the drive to help out students and help them before they get into trouble. The East Hempfield Police did a great job of allowing Officer Henry to come in for the first week or so of school to get Officer Marks up and running. Officer Marks is on the shift that I came to, so there really wasn't a lot of mix-up. It's almost like we traded positions. Yeah. Hey. Hey. Going good, how are you? I dealt with juveniles every so often when we were at their house for different sorts of calls. And I noticed and my shift partners noticed and I seem to really enjoy dealing with the younger kids and trying to be there for them as a good role model or just somebody that has a piece of advice. Kids can come to me and if they have a problem, I'm one that they can come talk to. Officer Marks highlights some elements that make his job as SRO different from his previous job. You're in one spot. You're not running across a 22 square mile township. It's a little bit different in most of you are juveniles. So the laws with adults and laws with the juvenile are the biggest difference. Mr. Degg describes the impact of having an SRO in the high school. Statistically, the impact of having an SRO, numbers of fights uh, and, and conflicts are down. Uh, the number of incidences that we proactively stopped are greatly up. I think the relationship between students and police officers is a better relationship because of uh, the SRO. With the SRO here every day, the kids realize police officers are real people. So I think as far as from the student uh, perspective of what this person is in our school, it's not a threat, it, he's a resource. He solidifies that feeling that our police officers, especially in East Hempfield, are here for us. Hempfield may have experienced a change in school resource officers, but citizens can be sure that students will still be safe at Hempfield. For Hempfield Happenings, I'm Julia Campbell. Like the new student resource officer, Ms. Vermani has taken over as the social studies department head. Molly Hooley received some insight as to what this new position entails. I'll give you a book, yes. You're actually going to get a book. You know. Hemfield is experiencing a lot of staff changes in the new school year. One of the most prominent being Mr. Vermani as the new social studies department supervisor. So I've been at Hemfield for 16 and a half years. Um, I long term subbed here. I student taught here. I drew and blocked here. And then I've been teaching in the classroom for over 15 and a half years. So one of the sort of normal progressions is, you know, as a teacher, you look for growth opportunities. So when this <clears throat> opportunity opened, um, I thought about it long and hard, and I decided that it was something I wanted to pursue. Mr. Vermani's new position has quite a few responsibilities. The supervisor is in charge of uh, managing the social studies staff. So I have about 27 staff on uh, in the department. The daily sort of responsibilities is to observe, to do walkthroughs, um, to manage the budget of the social studies department, and any issues that kind of come up during the day um, that need to be addressed, we would address those. Um, there's obviously curriculum, uh, which is a bigger, broader sort of uh, responsibility, which the supervisor is in charge of. And social studies is such that we go K through 12 so that the curriculum process has begun years ago. Mr. Vermani, as our department chair, is really the key point person for the social studies department. So if there's ever any issues or questions that the social studies teachers have, he's our first point of contact. I think that a department head is very important as an advocate for our content area. They know what we teach, they know the importance of that, and then they can express that and other areas advocate for us and advocate for what we're teaching and, and why it's important. According to teachers, the transition of power from Dr. Trago, the previous department head, to Mr. Vermani has gone smoothly. So, so far there haven't been any major changes. We have gone through a major curriculum review over the last several years in the history department and we did a lot of that with Dr. Trago. 
And so those were really big changes, realigning curriculum and some of those things. So I think Mr. Romani's jumping into that and doing a great job continuing that process. I think that he's already sort of stepped up unknowingly and I think that it's just going to continue to carry through this year as he gets um, you know, more comfortable in the position and more understanding about what's going on with the curriculum, et cetera, in all the, in all the classes. Mr. Vermani is excited for the year ahead of him in his new position. Um, but just to kind of take it all in and whatever opportunities come, try to embrace those uh, and the challenges. It's a, it's a great opportunity at this stage in my career to take this step and you know, see, see what uh, this part of the admin world has to, has to hold. Wishing Mr. Vermonti the best of luck in the new school year. For Hempfield Happenings, I'm Molly Hooley. Many students in Hempfield School District were not born before the tragic events on September 11, 2001. Luke Dreyer spoke with Mr. Vermonti as well to look into how these past catastrophic events are being incorporated into the social studies curriculum. The terrorist attacks on September 11, 2001 were a catastrophic event that will forever change the American way of life. But some students here at Hempfield were not even born yet. The new social studies department supervisor, Mr. Vermani, explained how the lessons of 9-11 are incorporated into Hempfield's curriculum. So we have a unit called Arab-Israeli Conflict, but within that unit, or within the Middle East unit of that subunit, was the rise of terrorism. So obviously being a huge historical, uh, you know, terroristic event, we look at, all right, well, there it is. There's that, that piece which we could tie back to our curriculum. A student at Centerville Middle School shared why he feels it is important that we discuss the events that occurred on 9-11 in the classroom. I feel like it was something really important which changed the way we view a lot of people from different races and ethnicities in this country. The student also expressed his thoughts on the purpose of studying history. I think it's so you can get a better understanding of your country, especially like if you want to go into like politics or anything, you kind of know what you're talking about. You know, you get a good understanding of what this world is and like what we truly live in. Mr. Vermani also shared his take on the goals of the Social Studies Department here at Hempfield. The goal of the History Department, I would say K through 12, is to create well-informed uh, citizens where we progress from at the elementary level of being a citizen of a, of a local area to a state level to the federal level uh, and then to a global context. Um, if you look at the mission statement of the Hempfield School District, we are uh, right in there. It says to create well-rounded well global citizens. We continue to teach lessons from the past in hopes of creating a better future. For Hempfield Happenings, I'm Luke Dreyer. So Luke, we just saw how 9-11 is incorporated into the social studies curriculum at Hemfield. Can you tell me why you decided to do a story on that? Yeah, so the idea stemmed from the fact that a lot of our kids, uh, our student body, was born after 9-11, um, and that for a lot of people in our school district, students in our school district, this is becoming history now. So I wanted to look into how we're incorporating this into curriculum and how we're teaching uh, kids about what happened on 9-11 so that we can eventually move forward uh, to creating a better school district and then once kids graduate and move on into a better world. Awesome, I think that was a great idea for a story. Yeah, thank you. And now for our next story, students in the Hemfield School District have many different interests during the fall season. I went to Farmdale Elementary School to find some opinions about what the best part about fall is. I came to Farmdale Elementary School to find out what the kids' favorite part about fall is. Uh, my favorite part about fall is watching uh, Penn State play football. Uh, Halloween and getting candy. I like being in school during the fall year because mainly because it's my birthday. My favorite part about fall is the good weather and some of the holidays near like Halloween and stuff like that. And I like I like just playing in the leaves or whatever's around or something like that. Painting pumpkins. Painting pumpkins. Um, it's chillier and you can be outside a lot and you can just, I mean, you can be outside and it's just fun to watch all the leaves turn different colors and, yeah. We had, had found pumpkins in a yard and we planting uh, um, out back and then they grew little ones that were little orange ones and then we snapped them off because they were getting cracks in them and then we were painting the areas in the cracks. 
I'm eating pumpkin pie. I like all the colors from leaves. I like when they change colors. Because of stepping puddles and stuff. Mrs. Burns, an art teacher at Centerville Elementary School, recently won the Central Pennsylvania Writing Contest. Andrew Schaffler spoke with her to learn more about this big surprise. You can slide it down this way, and what's going to happen is next week we're going to get into some color. To the students of Centerville Elementary School, Mrs. Burns may just be an art teacher, but to others, she's an award-winning writer. And from there, he transformed this into a... After many entries, Mrs. Burns finally placed first in the Central Pennsylvania Magazine Writing Competition. So there were 13 finalists invited to York to find out who won kind of thing, so they announced it and then I was um, invited to read my work. Some would say she had a hidden talent, so hidden her students didn't even know about it. No, I didn't know that. I only thought she was like an artist. <laughs> I did not. It's cool. The Perfect Present, which was the winning story written by Mrs. Burns, was based on her true life experiences. So my mom, um, when she was uh, in college, she had been in a terrible car accident. Um, she went through the windshield and was in the hospital for months. Uh, I've been hearing about it growing up and um, some of the anxiety that follows and uh, swirls around that. Uh, this time that I was driving, this was a few years ago, um, I sort of had this experience where like I witnessed a crash and um, felt it so strongly that I absorbed it and just was able to sort of weave those two stories together. Wishing Mrs. Burns best of luck in her future contests. For Hemfield Happenings, I'm Andrew Schaffler. Animal cruelty takes place every day. Lauren Daig analyzed a new law passed in Pennsylvania to prevent animal cruelty called Libre's Law. Here at the Speranza Animal Rescue lives a dog named Libre, also known as a bug-eyed miracle. He was rescued from a Lancaster farm where he was found in near-death conditions. With the help of a local shelter, he was nursed back to health and now makes an emotional and profound impact on everyone he meets. On July 4th in 2016, Libre was found by a delivery truck driver at an Amish dog breeding farm. The 16-month-old Boston Terrier was on the brink of death. He was immediately taken to the Dillsburg Veterinary Center in northern York County. Libre's owner and rescuer, Janine Guido, who runs Speranza Animal Rescue, explains the state he was in. Libre was in and out of consciousness. He was um, limp, cold, barely breathing. Uh, the vet suggested euthanasia on my drive there. I had not seen him yet in person. Um, obviously, I said no. Even though Libre is not the only animal to have suffered from harsh cruelty, his rescuers updated the public almost every day on Facebook of his improvement, causing more and more attention to his story. A group called Justice for Libre is based on making a difference for animals, fighting animal cruelty, and working together to strengthen the animal welfare laws in Pennsylvania. They worked with Libre and the Speranza Animal Rescue to have the law started and after the second attempt to pass it. Libre's law was passed Wednesday, June 28, 2017. Senator Almond gives specific information about the law and what he thought is so special about Libre. It was most commonly known as Libre's law. It uh, turned out to be a, a omnibus animal cruelty bill. So I think most legislators knew it as House Bill 12 1238. So first the bill addresses neglect. It defines uh, what the neglect of an animal is and, is and there's penalties associated with that. The law continues to define an offensive cruelty to an animal, outlining punishment based on malicious, willful, and aggravated cruelty along with tethering. There are also extensive points having to do with the appointment and removal of humane society, police officers, civil immunity, and animal mutilation. Libre was incredibly personable. A lot of lawmakers had the opportunity to interact with Libre. A lot of lawmakers had the opportunity to hear Libre's story, which was so compelling. Libre continues to constantly visit the Capitol and public events to share his story wherever he can. Um, Libre was out and about um, seemingly all spring and early summer, working rooms, going into um, meeting with, with legislators. 
Libre's Law has brought exceptional awareness to the landscape of animal cruelty. Pennsylvania still has a far way to go, but Libre has paved the way for additional legislation. For Hemfield Happenings, I'm Lauren Degg. Lately, teachers in the Hemfield School District have been using new technology in their classrooms. This technology is 3D printing. Bailey Rye examined how this technology has been beneficial. 3D printing has become very popular lately and people are finding more uses for it every day. This is especially true for Hempfield schools who have found how useful 3D printing is during the school day. The first school I visited was Centerville Middle School. I spoke with the librarian, Mrs. Deck, and she had a lot of information about their school's 3D printing endeavors. So our 3D printer is mainly used for um, student interest based uh, projects. So it's used in our makerspace during flex. Um, students can sign up to use it. Um, we train them on it and they can design their own projects. Um, having the 3D printer option is just a overall positive for the school. After speaking with Mrs. Deck, I headed to Hemfield High School to talk to Dr. Boring, a tech ed teacher, to see what he knew about 3D printing in Hemfield School District. The first 3D printer we got in 2007 and it was uh, a new technology, it was a huge machine, uh, quite expensive, and it only did one color, and it was great for the first generation, but the newer 3D printer is a much better one. A couple of different examples, how I use them in my class is uh, to try to get concepts across. This is a concept of a part that has a hole in the middle of it, and it's hard to figure out exactly how you would draw that, how you would sketch that. Without being able to hold this part in their hand, it's all a mental exercise. So the parts actually give a hands-on, it gives a real kind of a feel to everything. And every one of the uh, computers, everybody has a part that they can pick up and look at. 3D printing has found its importance in Hemfield School District and it is improving with every year. It will be interesting to see what the future has in store for 3D printing. For Hemfield Happenings, I'm Bailey Rye. Going from new to old, Central Market in downtown Lancaster has been around for a number of years. Taylor Hess researched deeper into the market's history. Here, in the center of Lancaster City, lies Central Market, a place of great history where families come together to shop local. It's not just a place for you to come and get your food to nourish you, it's also a community. It's also getting to know who grows and makes your food. It's getting to know different people and, and just a sense of community and coming together. It's more um, as much of an, as an experience as it is uh, you know, going to get your groceries. Here in Hempfield, the market contributes to many lives, but few know anything about its history. All I know is that it's in Lancaster County, it's like a very popular place for Lancaster residents. Um, my family goes there a lot, but we've only started going recently. I know that it's the oldest market in the United States, and I go there a couple times a month on a Saturday to grab a coffee and walk around. Manager Mary Goss explains the history. We are a public market, and we're open in 1730. We were chartered alongside the city of Lancaster as a market town. In the charter, it does state that the Lancaster city should always have, twice a week at least, a public market. The land that the market sits on right now used to be owned by Alexander Hamilton, and he donated his property to the uh, city of Lancaster and that uh, was purpose solely for running a public market. Stemming from a unique colonial history, Central Market has provided Lancaster County with locally made products for 287 years and counting. For Hemfield Happenings, I'm Taylor Hess. Tune in next month to learn more about Four Seniors' Trip to Russia. Also, next month's show will be themed around individuals with disabilities. Thank you for watching this month's episode of Hemfield Happenings.